When you think of Nintendo, chances are what's immediately going to pop to mind are bright, colorful, family-friendly games. Stuff like Mario, Kirby, or Pikmin, among others. There's no shortage of them. Of course, now they also have more adult-oriented games, like Bayonetta or Astral Chain or even Fire Emblem to a certain extent. But it wasn't until 2002 that they published their first ever M-rated game. That being Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem for the GameCube. It's a survival horror game sort of akin to Resident Evil, but you jump around a few different timelines. But it's probably best known for some of its fourth wall breaking elements, like turning down your TV's volume or making you think the game crashed. Now, I've never played the game for myself because... yeah. But I've heard nothing but good things about it. I hope to try it for myself someday, but until then I'll have to settle for Nintendo's second M-rated game, Geist. The game was developed by Endspace, who brought it to Nintendo hoping to get it published by them. And looking at the games they made prior to Geist, I'm kinda surprised Nintendo actually agreed. It was first shown off at E3 2003, with it planned to release that same year, but a number of delays eventually pushed it back to 2005. And let's just say the delays did not help much. Booting up the game, you're greeted to music that is just way too loud and does not suit the game at all. You play as John Ramey, a scientist of some sort who's sent in with a special ops team to extract your best friend, Thomas Bryson, from some underground facility owned by Volks, a weapon research company. Some shit goes down and Ramey is eventually captured and his soul or whatever is separated from his body, turning him into a ghostly entity. He's rescued by, dear God, what is this horrifying child, which leads to the whole premise of this game being able to possess objects, animals, and people. Rami can't seem to find his body, and since he was rescued from the soul separating machine, he can only stay in ghost form for so long before he dies. And the best way to stay alive is to possess things. Or eat plants, apparently. Dude, what are you doing? Doctor said this would make me healthy. Sure, yeah, okay. The game doesn't let you possess just any object, so you're stuck with some predefined ones. Each has their own function, though a lot of it just boils down to scaring people somehow. You see, while objects can be possessed just by finding and interacting with them, people and animals can only be possessed once they're scared, as denoted by the outline around their body. White means they're fine, yellow means they're on edge, and red means- Oh shit, oh fuck! Once they're red, that's Raimi's time to shine. The method of scaring acts out kind of like a mini puzzle, with a set order of things you'll need to do to get them scared enough. It kind of sucks that there's really no room for experimentation here. You have to possess the right objects in the right order or it won't work. There's also basically one set person or animal you'll need to be to advance at any given time. And this is really the only true defining feature of the game, so if we can't even excel at that, there's really not much hope for the rest of the game. Whether you're in ghost or possessed form, you'll see this... Uh, thing in the bottom corner the entire time. And outside of telling you what you currently are, I saw absolutely no purpose for it whatsoever. It's just you? but in third person. That being said, you can make it do this. For the most part, you're still gonna be playing as a human, though you jump around between various ones throughout the game. Some are simply scientists or engineers that have no abilities outside of being able to sprint, but can gain you entry into previously inaccessible areas. Most often though, you'll be a soldier, and the only gun you get is the one they're holding, which is usually a machine gun of some sort. Switching guns means switching bodies. The upside is that every gun has unlimited ammo, which includes grenades if they have them, so you'll only ever have to worry about reloading. The downside is that shooting feels like absolute garbage. Remember Darkwatch from my last video? Now that's a shooter from this era that did shooting right. Now I don't know if it's just because of the GameCube controller and its weird little C-stick, but aiming and shooting in Geist just feels awkward throughout. Guns don't have nearly enough impact to them, and everything just feels stiff. To make up for this is the fact that the enemy AI is some of the stupidest I've ever seen in a video game. 
a lot of the time they'll have absolutely no awareness of what's going on around them. You could shoot a couple guys in one room, and in the next room over, the enemies will just be standing around as if nothing happened. Or in the case of this guy, he didn't even care that I shot everyone within 20 feet of him. Even if you have a buddy alongside you, they're still just as dumb. When you're not possessing anything, Raimi can float around in his ghost form freely. You have a health bar that slowly depletes, but at no point is this actually an issue. In addition to plants randomly placed around that you can use to refill that bar, simply possessing and depossessing anything refills it completely too. And because it takes so long for it to fully deplete, and with something almost always nearby to help you replenish, the health bar seems pretty much pointless. You can even extend it by finding some ghost collectibles hidden throughout the levels, not that I noticed any discernible difference when I did. And speaking of pointless, Early on, the game teaches you how dogs will be able to detect you while you're in your ghost form, unlike most humans. You would think that would mean having to sneak around the dogs in a clever way, but no. The only way to get past the first one is to just possess a soldier and shoot everything in your way, including the dog. And then the dog concept is basically dropped for the rest of the game. It's like they tease you with a somewhat neat concept and then do absolutely nothing with it. And this is kind of the running theme in this game, wasted potential. You're basically doing the same thing from chapter to chapter. Scare a specific character with a routine puzzle, possess them, use them to get to a certain area, maybe shoot a bunch of guys along the way with the terrible gunplay, rinse and repeat. Sometimes you'll fight a boss, though there's a lot of repeats with those, and sometimes you'll get to do something a bit more unique, like having to figure out how to incapacitate a few soldiers sneakily, which is done by poisoning a soup as a cook, or doing this rivet memory minigame that's only purpose is to get a collectible. But for the most part, it's fairly standard stuff. And that's not what I was really expecting from a game where you get to be a ghost. The story admittedly has its moments though. The scary ghost girl from earlier, named Gigi, guides Raimi through the compound he was taken to, where he eventually saves his friend Bryson before his soul is separated too. In the process though, a rift is open that unleashes a bunch of monsters in the world. Raimi gets Bryson out by helicopter but decides to stay to get his own body back. Unfortunately, another being has possessed his body and promptly shoots down Bryson's helicopter. Raimi chases after his body and eventually finds a secret underground mansion. There, he finds Gigi again, where she tells him why she's a ghost. When she was alive, she was forced to live here with her older brother Alexander and her aunt after her parents died. Alexander was a fan of the occult, often reading about it in this big tree. Gigi tried climbing up to him one day but fell and hit her head, killing her. Alexander attempts to save her with an ancient ritual but ends up turning her into a ghost instead, and in the process being possessed by a demon himself. Many years later, Alexander came to found the Volks Corporation the same company that Raimi was captured by and turned him into a ghost, and that is causing all this commotion. This eventually leads Raimi to fighting off the being that possessed his body, allowing him to reclaim it. With it, due to the suit that his body had, comes the ability to temporarily slow down time with the push of a button. This basically trivializes the last two chapters even more so, as the meter that dictates when you can slow time refills pretty quickly. New enemies are also introduced that can take over Raimi's body and guide him to danger like fire or open pits, forcing you to mash A to regain control, as well as guys who can see and shoot you when you're in ghost form. Both are pretty easily fought back with your new slow time power. Eventually you get to fight Alexander as he floats around on his rocket power gun toting wheelchair in what is a mostly annoying fight as he just takes forever to kill with the little damage your gun hits him with. Once he's dealt with, Gigi shows up and tries to save her brother by diving into him, with Raimi following. Here you get to fight the demon that was possessing him and man, I have no idea what is going on in this fight. It's an absolute visual mess and the controls are all over the place. You'll get randomly thrown up and down and then get hurt by god knows what as you try to shoot him. But once the demon's finally down for good, Gigi and the ghost of her brother, now as a kid again, fly off and Raimi makes it back to the surface where he's picked up by a very much alive Bryson because clearly a helicopter being hit by a rocket launcher means absolutely nothing. The ending with Gigi and Alexander is admittedly kinda sweet as you can tell it hurt Gigi watching her brother turn into what he did because of the demon inside him. There were also a couple other small highlights in the game for me. I like the one extended sequence where you play as a particular mouse and then you get this fun little song as you sneak around.
or where you possess a TV to scare some other mice, or even how when you possess turrets and you get this pixelated look when you zoom in. The problem is these kind of moments are few and far between, and for a Nintendo published game it's kind of rough in spots. The voice acting is mostly terrible. Don't get me wrong, I was gonna have a little weasel shot before you stepped in. There's a couple weird bugs like when using the slowdown power by doors will just shut them in front of your face, or how sound effects will seemingly not play. And overall, the game is really not that great to look at, with very basic looking environments. I think when you see published by Nintendo, expectations are suitably raised, and Geist just does not live up to those. The premise of being a ghost and being able to possess things is a cool concept, but it's just never utilized to its full potential. Having to scare people and animals to be able to possess them had so much room for experimentation, but it's ultimately just kinda routine. The gunplay is mostly terrible, with killing guys almost never satisfying to do. The AI is so incredibly dumb, and overall, it's just a rough game. It's good that Nintendo was still willing to publish M-rated games after Eternal Darkness, especially since we got great ones like Bayonetta 2 eventually, but it's kind of puzzling why they decided to publish this one at all. I'd say if you were curious about trying the game out for yourself, it's probably best just to skip it. But thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned in my next video where I'm going to be playing Elevates for the Wii. Until then, have a good one. See ya! Hello and welcome back to the after credits but there was no credits section of the video. Uh, I know it's been a long time since my last video and I'm sorry about that. Also sorry that there was kind of a few graphical glitches in some of the footage. Uh, the second half of all my footage ended up all glitchy and corrupted for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna have to look into that. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing and see more videos like this. Uh, and also be sure to comment, tell me anything you want about the video. You can follow me on Twitter at Nebulao if you want to connect at all. Uh, but again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!